For some of you, you're just following along and listening to the next one, and it's probably been a week for us. We have didn't even wait like a minute, so we're just pushing pause and starting over again. So let's just jump right into it, because they can listen to the first one to kind of hear more about you. So the next question is one cool miracle. Do you mind going first on this one? I would love to. So this is more of a personal miracle for me that... Actually, let me rephrase that. This miracle was all because of the youth. Because of God, through the youth. Mm-hmm. Last week was a hard week. Definitely my hardest week that I've had. And my youth, or at least the boys, they weren't really um, taking in any of the things that were being taught to them. They kind of were there for not the right reasons. They liked the fun aspect of FSY, but all the spiritual stuff was kind of going over their heads. My question is, how did they all end up in the same company? That's a good question. <laughs> like, genuinely a good question, because they were pretty similar. Honestly, I think they were a little bit distracting. Maybe God just wanted them all together because better than an entire, like all of the boys that don't want to be there together than have a few in different out. groups. Yeah, yeah that I don't makes know. Sense. Uh, and it worked out well. Like it, I learned a lot that week, and honestly, I, I ended up loving each of the boys. They're amazing. But it was just hard. Like I spent a lot of time on my knees, mm-hmm. a lot of time in tears, just over like mm-hmm. how do I help these boys. Basically, Thursday is testimony meeting, and last week on Thursday, none of my boys went up and bore their testimonies. It's devastating. It you feel devastating. like a failure. I, you yes. feel like it's all your fault. Yep. You feel like you haven't done any good. I'm not trying to speak for you. I'm no. speaking in my own experience. Yep. But if you've been a counselor, it's pretty universal that if like your youth don't go up on Thursday, you just kind of feel like uh, trash. Yes. Well, I was praying and praying and praying. I was like, please get up. And not only that, they were kind of like whispering and messing uh, around. And I kept and having to be like, guys, and, like, yeah. please. It hurt because I was like, this, this opportunity is right in front of you. And there have been so many opportunities right in front of you. And you just will not take them. And all you have to do is, like... Reach out. Just, yes, and it's right there. And it just, like, hurt me so bad. I was like, boys, it's right here. This goes back to what that counselor said, but it's just been mind-blowing for me. FSY can either be a good experience mm-hmm. or a life-changing mm-hmm. one. And obviously for them, it was a and good it, experience. And it was their choice. And oh, I, I did everything in my power. Like, I, I believe you. wanted to force them to make it a life-changing experience. Oh, I believe you. So that's what hurt more is this. I was like, boys, this is your choice, and this is the choice you're going to make. Anyways, I prayed and prayed and prayed, and after that, I, w- I was pretty devastated. Yeah. Fast forward to this week. I Before this week started, I was just praying and being like, God, I feel like I have like good experiences and things that I want to share with this youth. Like, I'm really passionate about the gospel. I love the gospel. I want youth that are going to take it in, yes. that are going to just, like, be here for the right reasons so I can just like give them this thing that I have and they will take it yeah. because it felt like the other boys just were not taking what I was giving well, them. Well, I feel like you're thinking, I have so much to offer. Mm-hmm. Can someone please just take just, it? Just take like, it. Like, I want you to yeah. take this. Please, please take, take it. Take this gift. Take this thing that will make you infinitely happier. Yes. And I promise you it will be worth it. And then some of them are like, no thanks. Yes. So, leading up to this week, that's all I wanted. Like, that's all I was praying for. And then Thursday comes around again. <laughs> And we were doing testimony meeting, and the first three boys that stood up were from our group. They and just, were... I just had the biggest smile on my face, but also just the thought that, like, God is aware of you. He knows you. And he, like, we go through, we all go through struggles. We all go through hard things, but God will bless us for persevering through those well, things. Well, and their testimonies were so they good, were too. They weren't like, I know. It yeah. was like deep from the heart kind of stuff they were so genuine and just from last week of me praying and being so disappointed during testimony meeting to the start of this week just like those three boys just right after they're like instantly standing up and bearing their testimonies it was really special yeah we didn't have to sit there for very long before people jumped up yeah very true i would say one miracle for me there was a lot of miracles for me this past week actually i would say it was one of my more miraculous weeks of my 18 weeks i can't believe i've 18 weeks under my belt. <laughs> like, crazy. what? I low-key wanted to be able to say I've done 20 weeks, yeah. but it, 
whatever. You have to do two more. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, two weeks. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. Well, I'll have, I'll have 19 because this is my 19. Oh yeah. Next year, one week of FSY. <laughs> Go through training just for one week. Oh my gosh. I would rather not. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to say die. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Finish my other sandwiches. That's what I was going to say. Anyway. Okay, one cool miracle. I feel like one of the cool miracles was an individual miracle with one of our boys. On Monday, I was sitting, I'll go through all of this again in my episode by myself, the episodes by myself, but I was sitting in orientation and I just had this thought, you need to hug this young man. And I thought, that is the weirdest thing. He's going to be weirded out. He's going to think I'm weird. He's going to be super... I don't know what other word to use other than weird. Like, yeah. he's just going to think I'm really strange. And he's going to think, what the frick am I doing here? Like, that was really weird. And I've had some young men react that way. And yeah. so I was just preparing. And in my notes, I literally have written down, I'll keep you updated. Like, <laughs> I don't even know yet. And I even told you about it. I was like, I have this prompting but it's really weird, and it's going to be really weird, and so I'm scared. And you were like, tell me, well, actually, I want to wait. And yeah. I was like, yeah, you probably want to hear the end of the story, not, yeah. like, midway through. So I actually have something highly to speak of you about this, because when I was trying to work this miracle, or not work this miracle, but follow this personal revelation that I was getting, you just picked up and you led the company in doing things. And I haven't, I've had co's that just stand there and wait for me, and I'm like... No, yeah. you were wasting time. Yeah. Get on this. Anyway, so I realized that my time was running out, that I needed to go talk to this young man. And I was like, shoot. So you went to go get some of the other youth, and I, like, ran to go talk to him. And I sat down next to him and just asked, you know, if I could talk to him. And I told him to think of a question and to write it down. And then apparently the next day, well, I went up to him again. And apparently that day when I talked to him again, I had answered the question that I told him to write down, which I feel like is really big. Like, that's a big miracle. And obviously I don't get to know what that was, but it's just cool to hear that if you continually follow promptings and you continually follow what Heavenly Father's telling you to do, crazy, amazing, super miraculous things are going to happen, and you just have to trust that. So, anyway. I love that. Okay, our goals as a coach. So fun. Ha <laughs> ha. I think we set, like, two goals mm-hmm, as a coach. Mm-hmm. I'll explain the one that I came up with. You explain the one you did. But I just wanted to, or we, I guess it's both of them were us because it was our goals. But we wanted to focus on having one-on-one, like, personal interactions with each of the people for a variety of different reasons. But one of those reasons is just, just so they know that we know them, that we see them, that they feel loved. It's really easy as a counselor of these camps just to, like, talk to everybody as a whole, talk to them as a group, do things as a group. But, like, when you are able to talk to an individual youth and just, like, ask them how they are, ask them about themselves, like, learn something about them, it makes them feel special. And for me, it's just, like, I feel so much more invested in what I'm doing because I love these youth because I know each of them. So true. (laughs) So true. So true. I am going to be bothered until we figure it out. But there was, this is a tangent. But I like, you said something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my gosh, we've been around each other for a long time. You picked up something I said. And you're like, no, I say that all the time. And I was like, wait, really? Yeah. I say that all the time. And I don't remember what it is. I can't remember either. I know. I remember that moment as well. But I do not remember what we said. We'll figure it out. I think we were right there. Yeah. Anyway, that's super off tangent, but I agree. I think you're more invested, and it makes the week more meaningful, mm-hmm. you know, because if you actually know the youth and you love them one by one, you're able to feel God's love for them one by one. Yes. And honestly, I think they're able to feel that one by one, mm-hmm. because if you don't take the time to get to know them individually and to help them feel special individually, it's just kind of like a group experience. Yep. And the gospel is not a group experience. Exactly. I was just going to say, like when Jesus would come to big groups of people, I think no matter how big the group, he tried to have a one-on-one experience with all of them. Like I think of 3rd Nephi 11 when he spent that time with each one of them. Like he totally easily could have stood there and been like, I am Jesus Christ, look at me. Mm-hmm. But he knew the impact that could have by, by having a one-on-one experience with them. Yeah. Really cool. In addition to that, I mean, Jesus is the Christ. So mm-hmm. he literally could have been like, I love you, and had the Spirit testify to each person, mm-hmm. and they would have still felt that love. Mm-hmm. But he went above and beyond. 
I shared this with the youth. Elder Bednar, in his book, One by One, talked about how if every single Nephite, was it Lamanite or Nephite? Lamanite. Nephite? 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 One of them. <laughs> I don't remember. I That's really embarrassing. I think it's the Nephites. The Nephites, yeah. Yeah, let's go with Nephite. <laughs> when he had the Nephites come up to him one by one, if they spent only 15 seconds with him individually, he would have been standing there for 10 hours. And that's only if they spent 15 seconds with him. Yeah. Like, if there were 16 seconds, it would have been longer than 10 hours. <laughs> I'm sure, honestly, I'm sure it was more than 15 seconds. Yeah. I would expect, at yeah. least. But I think that was, like, a conservative amount. Yes. Like, 15 seconds. Yeah. Because, I mean, sure, you can feel loved with 15 seconds, but it takes longer than that. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So, yeah. That says speaks highly of just who he is as a person. But, yeah, our goal was to have one-on-one -on -one moments with, with each youth. And then, would you say, what else was it like to communicate well? Just, yeah, communication, make sure we were on the same page, but also just to make sure we knew how the youth were doing. Yeah, I we, think this wasn't a goal that we set, but yeah. it kind of became something that we would speak highly of each other in front of the youth. Mm -hmm. It smells like rotten egg where they're, we're sitting. They're like, we're literally sitting by these dumpsters <laughs> that they're throwing food in, and it is stinky. <laughs> I just like... I don't even know how you say this. You put your hand in front of your nose and like waved it. I don't know. Yeah, like the stinky symbol. Yeah. <laughs> she started laughing. It smells so bad. I just wanted to make sure she knew I wasn't like passing gas on her podcast. <laughs> I knew you were. Okay. It's coming from Holy over that there. Holy, that's rancid. <laughs> that's <is> really bad. <laughs> I bet people are just like, glad I can't stop that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to interrupt from what we were just saying. No, I I always love whew. tangents. I think they're funny. I think it makes it more real. <laughs> so true. You know, it's not fake. But yeah, I would say one goal was speaking highly of each other in front of the youth. Because mm -hmm. you had very nice things to say about me at R&R &R in front of the boys. And I, anytime I could, try to speak highly of you because it was easy to do, really. Well, I agree. I, and that's why it wasn't either of our goals. Because I don't think we, we intentionally did it. I we think didn't. it just kind of came naturally. And I honestly, for me, like the youth brought it up more than I did. The youth would be like... Kyra said this to me and it was amazing and I was just like yes Kyra is amazing and then we just like talk about it for a second it was awesome well I think something that genuinely helped a lot was you said Kyra really tries to follow her promptings so pay attention mm -hmm. like to what she does mm -hmm. because I remembered one morning it was Friday morning I said hey guys I'm just going to share something but you don't have to listen and immediately all, all of the of boys <laughs> like turned what I don't know it was like the yeah yeah <laughs> you know what I mean yep. they like turned their heads and listened and came right up to me and that's a, that doesn't always happen yeah. you know I mean you literally said last week you had things to offer and your boys did not mm -hmm. take it home with them mm -hmm. and I feel like we had things to offer and the youth were like Whoop. yes it was amazing <laughs> you know tell me let me let me take it home let me put it in my heart they were sponges yeah they were it was them. awesome <laughs> Okay, uh, company taking it home thoughts. Do you want to go first or do you want me to? You go ahead. Okay, I feel like company taking it home this week was so good. It was so, it good. Was so, so good. Honestly, that's one of those things that I just wish I could bottle up. Yeah. And I wish I could bottle it up for the youth more than for myself. Yeah. Because I know some of them were really, really impacted, yeah. really, really affected, and just felt the spirit so strong and felt loved. And I know that Heavenly Father loves them past FSY, but chances are they're not going to feel that mm -hmm. very often past mm -hmm. FSY, which just is heartbreaking to me. Yeah. There's only so much you can do as a counselor. There's only so much you can do as their friend and as their mentor. And so I just try to give them the most miraculous, life-changing experience I can yep. in one week and hope that that's enough. Yes. You know, but anyway, I would say watching the youth be so affected was super powerful for me and I feel like I like to kind of do this little spiel it's different every week it's kind of there's kind of like the same background but I say different things every week just depending on what I feel like my youth need and what I'm feeling prompted to say and I feel like this week was really cool to say something and to watch the youth be affected by it does that make sense 100%. and when we were singing a child's prayer which was not planned by the way yeah. most of the time I feel like it's last minute or whatever. It wasn't super last minute. But on Thursday during the musical program, I like literally sat down when it was over. It was like the very end of it. And I thought, I should ask Nathan. No, no, no. It was when we were singing the FSY medley. Uh -huh. That's when it was. We were singing the FSY medley, which is after the evening devotional before testimony meeting. 
And I thought, I should ask Nathan if he sings, or if he would be willing to sing. <laughs> Better question. Yeah, so then I texted him and was like, hey, what do you think about singing? And you were like, well, you caught me at a good time. And I just jokingly said, did I catch you a good time? Or did God? <laughs> and you said, both. <laughs> And so, anyway, we ended up discussing singing that night over the phone, and we decided on a child's prayer, which is so easy to sing a cappella. You don't have to really prepare for it. You don't have to have your phone out because you know the words. Yeah. And I feel like that's big. So, yeah, when we sang that song, first of all, I felt like it sounded so good. It did sound good. It sounded really good. And then also, there were some youth that were literally racking with sobs. And you know it's impacting them when they're doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I'm genuinely surprised I got through the song. I've had multiple experiences where I'm asked to sing a song. My senior year, actually, at the youth conference, I was asked to sing a song, literally sobbing through the entire song. I couldn't sing it, and the choir director turned around and sang it for me, and I'm just, like, standing there. Oh, there's a video. It's crazy. But I, <laughs> I, wanna see that. I was amazed, honestly, that I was able to get through it. But honestly, I feel like it was the spirit that helped me, because it's harder to feel the spirit when you're just watching someone cry versus hearing them like bear their testimony about <laughs> bearing their testimony through, through song. a song yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay that poor fly looks like it can't fly anymore I mean look at it okay sorry there's this fly on our table and it's just crawling around I think it can't fly anymore don't they only live for like three days I swear I learned that in like I think that's true maybe he's three days old <laughs> <laughs> we'll just let him die naturally <laughs> he's coming to the end of his life grandpa fly <laughs> Okay, sorry. I am, I'm always in favor of, like, just talking about what's going on. I love because it. it's real. Yep. You know, and if I edit this out, it's kind of enjoyable to listen to me. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> there was a fly on the table. By the way, the stench has gone away. <laughs> it has. It really has. Yeah. So I feel like it was really powerful. It was really cool. And I hope, if anything, the youth remember. Yes. And I would say one of my favorite things, oh my gosh, my favorite things, are when I get to hug them. And if I feel prompted, whisper something in their yep, ear. Yep. Like, for example, I hugged one of my girls, and I was just thinking about one of the questions she had asked me earlier in the week and how the answer was yes. Mm -hmm. And so I just said out loud, the answer is yes. I don't know. I just said it. Yeah. And she started crying some more, and I was like, okay, you know. <laughs> you know. And then she told me later that she had a question. She said to me, she said, Kyra, did you say the answer is yes? Yeah. Did you say that to me? And I said, yes, I said that to you. And she's like, oh my gosh. And I said, did you have a question or something? And she's like, yes. Yeah. Which just blows my mind. I think sometimes Heavenly Father will put certain thoughts into our head or guide us in a certain way for something we think is the reason. Mm -hmm. When really he's just trying to get us to do what he needs us to do. Yeah. And so, anyway. But that yeah. That was awesome. I loved hearing that. Yeah, that was well. <laughs> something crazy just happened. Yep, that's exactly the call that I got. Or a text even maybe that time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and then also to one of the young men, I just said, stay true, stay true. Mm -hmm. And then for one of them, I just, I said, you don't understand how much Heavenly Father loves you. You don't understand. Yeah. And he was just, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you I know. love it. What was your, what were your thoughts? Well, I, th I love what you were saying earlier, actually, about just, like, what the difference that it's going to be once they go home. Because we talk about taking it home, and there are very specific things you can't take home. But the spirit that you feel at FSY, it's like a very high, high. And it's kind of hard to reach that when you're just, like, sitting by yourself reading your scriptures. And I'm not saying you can't, but it's not it's not as easy. I don't 100%, know. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And I even told the youth that. I said, I feel really strongly to let you know that even though you're going home, it's possible. Because mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes we think, I'm done for. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, I'm not going to be able to feel the spirit again yeah. until I go back. Yeah. And it's not true. Well, and I think, I've, I also see it as, like, a, if you look at it as a roller coaster, like, there's very high peaks. And sometimes we, like, make that the cutoff of this is where we feel the Spirit. It's, like, these peaks. But I think also, like, the lower parts, we're still feeling the Spirit. We just aren't feeling it as strong. And I hope the youth <laughs> learn that. That, like, FSY and girls camp and these different experiences, that is not the only times that you're feeling the Spirit. That just might be the strongest times you're feeling the Spirit. But recognizing the Spirit in smaller doses, because that's way, it comes way more in those smaller doses, that is so, so, so important. So you know, like, I'm feeling the spirit right now, even though it might not, I might not be in tears hugging a big group of people, I'm still feeling the spirit, and I know yeah. that God is still speaking to me. I would just like to say I'm very impressed that I just made a face if you kept going. 
Thanks. I made a really big face. What you said is funny because I created literally a 30 minute episode on what you just said mm -hmm. already. And so it was just funny. I was like, huh, I've already said that. Go listen to that episode. I'm like, so episode true. number. Crap, I don't remember. <laughs> One of them. Um, 120, 119. Just listen 119. To the there we go. 119. It's called The Absolute Threshold. I love it. But yeah, you're 100% right. What you were saying, I was like, yep. yep. I literally talked about and how that's related to psychology. Mm -hmm. Actually, fun fact. Anyway, not important. Okay, the very last one. Oh, did you have anything else no, to add? No, just one more thing to add. No, please, you know? please, please, um, please. One of the hardest parts about Friday for me is looking at them and knowing that, like, life is still going to hit. Like, life is so not easy. And they're having this experience that's, like, beautiful and amazing, and you just know that, like, whether it be a year down the road, whether it be, like, three weeks down the road, like, something's hard is going to happen to them, and they're going to be struggling. But I love looking at them and being able to be like, I know right now you are feeling the spirit. And I know that you know that you're feeling the spirit. You know and you're feeling of God's love. Like this moment right now, you can never, you can't deny it. Like it's so real and you're having this right now. So that, like it makes me sad that like in the future, I know you're going to go through hard things. But we have had this moment that you can always look back on forever. And that is just so, so, so special to me because I have had experiences in my life where I'm struggling and I will think back to those moments. Like EFY, FSY moments where I just knew. Like they're just, you 100%. just can't explain it. You just feel it and you know that it's true. That's why I literally put a handbook and a pen in their hands sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, are you writing this down? Because yeah, yeah. you better. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. And I give them a very strong invitation, at least for the girls, and I try to give it to the boys too. Please make your handbook worth more than gold to you. Yep. Like if you could get an ounce of gold or your handbook, you would say, I want my handbook yep. because my spiritual experiences and what I wrote down in there is more valuable to me than material possessions. I love it. You know, and so that's kind of what I say to them. I say, make it worth so much to you. Yeah, and mine still are. I have both of my EFY ones. I go through things and throw them away all the time. I've never thrown those away. I still have them. Well, yeah. Keep them with me. You know, they're very, they're very valuable. And honestly, they can contain answers to questions that you have years down the road. 100%. I tell the youth that. Yeah. So, okay, our very last thing is bearing a mini testimony. Oh. Isn't that tender? It's tender. What do you, do you want to go first or do you want I, me to? I would love to go. Okay. I'm just going to imagine I'm telling my youth one more time. Love because it. I hope they, you guys are all you listening are. to this. You are telling yeah. them. But I know that Jesus is real. And I know that he knows each of us personally and loves us. And I don't understand how he can do that, but I know that he can. Because I have felt it, and I have watched people's lives change because of the love that he has for them. Not just the youth during FSY. I've seen friends that I've made on my mission. I've seen it in my own life. Um, I think a lot of the times the world likes to believe that Christ was just a historical figure, that psychology-wise brings people peace, that brings people a good feeling because they like talk. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the world believes about him, but I know that all of those are not true, that he lives today, that he really was resurrected, and that he is, like, pulling for us. That's, like, the only way that I can put it. He wants us Number so bad. Number one 100%. There's a quote that, that God is in relentless pursuit of you. It was just given recently, and I Patrick love here. it. I know that there is not limited space in heaven. I think if God could have all of us, he would, but it's dependent upon the choices that we make on earth. If we want to live with him again and be comfortable being in his presence. Um, anyways, I could go on and on, but basically I just love the gospel. I love Jesus Christ. I know that he's real. I know that repentance is real and that we can truly change because of him. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I was just thinking, they ask us at FSY to teach the youth that a testimony is centered on Jesus Christ. And testimony really can be about anything. Like, I have a testimony about math. You know, like, yeah. you just know something to be true. Yeah. But a testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ is focused on him and his restored gospel. Yeah. And that can mean that you have a testimony about prayer and you share about prayer or a testimony about personal revelation or X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things in the gospel that you can have a testimony of. But I love that you focused on him because I feel like he really is, I mean, not I feel, I know, he really is the center and he really is the most important part. And I think one thing that you said that stood out to me is, I don't know how. And honestly, embracing that I don't know how is comforting to me. Yeah. I love the song from last year, How Is It Done by Nick Day. Have you heard that song? 
so good because it just makes me feel so validated. Like, how is it done? I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. But I know that it is. Yeah. And honestly, at the end of the day, I don't have to understand in order to know that that's true. Yeah. So, anyway. My little testimony, you guys get to hear it all the time. But I, I'm just so grateful for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for his trust in me. I'm grateful that he sends me promptings. I'm grateful that he trusts me to follow through on them. I'm grateful that Jesus Christ is the master healer because I, without him, we'd be done. We'd be done for. <laughs> we'd be done for. And not even just because of like not being saved, but just this aspect of not being able to be healed. I mean, can you imagine if we just didn't have any hope to be healed about the things that we've gone through? Because, I mean, he knew that we were going to have hard times. He knew that there would be things that would tear our souls apart. I, I feel like space is needed right after that sentence. That there would be things in our life that would tear us apart. And I don't think everyone goes through experiences that tear us apart. I think people go through hard things. But I don't think everyone goes through things that tear you apart. Um, just for example, someone in the Young Women devotional, she was sharing about her daughter-in-law who, I mean, all of the abuse that you can imagine she experienced in her childhood. And that is something that tears you apart, you know, and something that sticks with you your whole life. Yeah. Anyway, the point in that is that it's comforting to me more than I can even express. Unfortunately, my laptop died in the middle of recording this. It is a blessing that it happened at the 26 minute mark. So I only lost about four minutes of audio, but just to wrap up with my testimony, it's comforting to me to know that there's nothing that Jesus Christ cannot heal, that there is no earthly sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And I know that Jesus Christ can't wait to heal us and to mend our broken hearts. Nathan and I finished by just talking about how much we loved our youth how much we love our youth, and how we will miss them. So anyway, I don't have the outro for this part, but I am so grateful for Nathan and for everything that he did. He's just absolutely amazing, and I can't speak highly enough about him. So anyway, don't forget to embrace imperfection, find meaning, satisfaction, and joy from the journey. I'm Kyra. Nathan's not here. <laughs> and this is Imperfectly Broken, the podcast. Do, 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 do.